Hello everyone, Matt here and welcome back to another episode of Boy Curious, the series in which I look at the bootlegs, unlicensed releases and generally anything a little bit weird for the Nintendo Game Boy. This week's episode kind of crosses the lines over into biographic territory, but as people are less familiar with this crazy ROM hack of the original release, I thought I'd show you another Sonic bootleg, but with a twist. Welcome to Sonic 6. Is that the Looney Tunes theme? I hear you cry. Well, folks, you've got good ears. Because this game isn't an unlicensed release like Sonic 3D Blast, but it's actually a ROM hack of Sons of Speedy Gonzalez. Which, if I'm sure we're all honest with each other here, is a rip-off of Sonic anyway. So in some kind of twisted way, it all makes sense, calatically, I think. You play as Sonic, whose sprite doesn't really fit with a level scale or aesthetic at all. Probably because it's lifted directly from Sonic 3, but hey. Short of the sprite ripple, there's no really defining features of a Sonic game. Short of the springs or loops that were already in the Speed Gonzalez original. The cheese pieces from Speedy aren't replaced by rings, for example. Sonic cannot spin, or nor can you kill any enemies. Put bluntly, it's a game of avoidance. You must avoid pit traps, enemies, and even drops of water to reach your goal at the end of the level. The game is split up into six zones, each with three levels and a boss fight at the end. What's weird with Sonic 6 is it rearranges the zone order from Speedy Gonzales. Instead of starting in the ice zone, which is perhaps the most Sonic feeling world in terms of gameplay, you instead start in Forest Zone, which is heavily platform focused, filled with poor level design and infinite frustration. Maybe they thought nobody would notice it was a ROM hack if they did this, perhaps. But come on! You're burying the lead here! This is Sonic! We want to go fast, not platform methodically. Apart from some peeves that a lot of Game Boy games suffer with, such as blind jumps, screen height limitations that mean you need to hold down to survey where the hell the next platform is, and an altogether frustrating dependency on impossible jumps. The level's variety, at least aesthetically, isn't too bad. Each of the game's six zones, Forest Zone, Ice Zone, Desert Zone, Mexico Zone, Country Zone and Cheese Island, while winning no awards for imaginative level titles, are all themed around the respective names for better or for worse. Ice Zone has penguins to jump on, Desert Zone has pyramid traps to avoid like in Indiana Jones, and Forest Zone is full of animals. However, as you might have guessed, Mexico Zone does leave you cringing a little as it contains a pretty stereotypical bandito sprite. The game's collectible of cheese kinda left me scratching my head a little as well, even in Speedy Gonzales, as it does nothing other than offer a high score at the end of the level, which you lose after the numerous but thankfully unlimited continues you need to complete the game. Some extra lives or a power-up of sorts might have been nice. However, they do offer some help with the poor level design, as following the cheese will often guide you as to how high to jump and where to fall. However, as they don't respawn on your death, you'll need to remember how to navigate the stage on your own if you die. The game's bosses are pretty standard fare, four jumps to the head and the enemy's dead. While their sprite design is kinda cool, they offer nothing to the player other than a means of lengthening the game. The emboss too is just the same sprite five times at varying speeds. Though, I know whoever designed the shimmering castle at the start of this boss fight is very proud of it, as you will see it every time you die. The game's score is nothing to write home about either, but hey, at least it is in Offenbach. Between the forced boss fights, lame music score, and pointless cheese, it almost feels like the folks at Sunsoft were following a how-to-make-a-game flowchart. Other things to collect? Check. Boss fights? Check. Good job everyone, take the rest of the week off. While the game toes the line of shovelware territory, Speedy and in turn Sonic 6 can be fun when it's being challenging rather than needlessly difficult. I'm also tempted to give the game a bit of a pass because it contains a spring onion, perhaps the greatest pun based sprite on the Game Boy. Other than that, there's a password system that allows the player to continue at a later time, which is a lifesaver. Though be warned, Speedy's codes don't work on Sonic and vice versa. Fortunately for you lovely people, I've put them in the description down below. And of course, 
It wouldn't be me playing a Sonic game without a game-breaking glitch. When the cart loads up Country Zone while in play, the level glitches into a horrible, broken world full of half-rendered pieces of cheese and oodles of pain. Though, through a lot of trial and error, and learning to spot which broken sprite represents what, I almost got through this misrendered hell before the game died on me. Fortunately, restarting the game and using the level's password allowed me to play the level as it should look, which is a lot nicer. However, perhaps the best thing about Sonic 6 over Speedy is the game's ending. While Speedy Gonzalez ends with everyone's favourite Latino mouse jumping for joy and saying his signature catchphrase, Sonic 6 simply ends with a screen that says, The End. Yep, I might as well read. Thanks for supporting video game piracy, motherfucker! And play a fart noise. All in all, both games are fun, but due to the difficulty tracking Sonic 6 down, not to mention the fact Speedy Gonzalez's sprite handles a lot better than everyone's favourite blue hedgehog, I would say get a hold of the original. It's a cheap game, and while it may seem frustrating to start with, you'll find yourself warming to it towards the end. And that brings us to the end of another Boy Curious, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, if you have, leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think of both games. You can also subscribe. I'm publishing two videos a week at the moment. Uh, it may be up to some Let's Plays as well, but we'll see. If you'd like to give me some feedback directly, you can contact me on Twitter at GameBoyle. And I also co-host a podcast which is available every Sunday in iTunes and Stitcher called Tom and Matt Attack. Give that a listen as well and like that on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Tom and Matt Attack. It's also on Twitter at TMACast. Until next week, guys. Game on. <laughs>